Hey guys, it's me, Soren, back with another video. Today is our 20th hidden figure. Only eight hidden figures left. Hopefully everyone has been having a great February thus far. And today's hidden figure is Jennifer Jackson, born February 6th, 1945, who is an American model who was chosen as Playboy Magazine's Playmate of the Month for the March 1965 issue. A pioneering pinup model, she was the first black playmate the first black playmate of the month and also worked as a playboy bunny in the playboy club jennifer jackson grew up on the south side of chicago and graduated from emil g hirsch high school in 1963. she's the daughter of Kleinel jackson senior and marjorie mcguire jackson and has eight siblings one of which is her identical twin jackson attended loop college now known as harold washington college and during school worked as a runway and advertising model Excuse me. She was employed by Eileen Ford of the Ford Modeling Agency, as well as with an agency called Black Beauty, which was nothing but black models. Jackson was the first black model to do Lady Clairol and cool cigarette ads appearing in Ebony magazine. While attending college, she went to the Chicago Playboy offices looking for a part-time job as a secretary, but was hired on the spot to become a Playboy bunny by Hugh Hefner. Her twin sister, Janice Jackson Holmes, also became a bunny, and I just want to let you guys know that uh, Hugh Hefner also hired black designer Zelda Wynn Valdez, who went on to design the iconic Playboy bunny costume with the bunny ears, and I actually have also done a hidden figure on her as well, so you guys can look that up if you're interested in learning more about Zelda Wynn Valdez. Uh, in March 1965, Jackson became the first black playmate in Playboy magazine. She was the most popular playmate, receiving the most fan mail of any of the other models. Jackson continued to attend school while working as a bunny, living in her own apartment as opposed to within the Playboy mansion and graduating with a bachelor's degree in human services with emphasis on counseling. In the late 70s, she moved to Seattle, Washington, where she worked for the University of Washington and, in 1990, became a social worker. As a social worker, she worked in the sex abuse unit, becoming instrumental in the passage of laws to protect children, as well as training and working with foster parents. In 2009, Jackson retired from social work, and she still lives in the Pacific Northwest with her husband. She has three children and three grandchildren. And I have a quote here from Jennifer Jackson that I'm just going to read to you guys. Jackson thought little of the shoot at the time, her groundbreaking uh, Playmate shoot. If I knew there would be an internet, I never would have done it, she laughs. I'm thinking it'd be a one-shot deal and then over with. Instead, her spur-of-the-moment decision helped in some small way to shape a much larger conversation about race brewing all around her. The Vietnam War was ramping up, and she felt proud that black soldiers could see one of their own in the magazine's glossy pages. I got so many fan letters from those guys. It broke my heart, she says. A lot of them never came back, and some who did come back were real messed up. In Jackson's mind, her appearance in Playboy helped shift things, if only a little. It was something, she says, to show that there are some beautiful black women, beautiful black people, which was disregarded. We weren't considered at all. We weren't a part of Madison Avenue or Hollywood who set the beauty standards. At that time, all you saw in the movies was black maids. And that is Jennifer Jackson, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There will be links and information in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow with our next hidden figure. Peace.